Welcome to election 2013, the Ward 5 race for city council. I'm joined here with Ron Van Dam, my broadcast partner from WXBI Radio, Mark Lindy from Brockton Community Access, and we have the two candidates for city council in Ward 5. We have Dennis DiNapoli and Ollie Spears. Hello, Brockton. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Mark. My name is Ollie Spears, and I'm a lifelong resident of Brockton. I was born and raised and grew up on the east side, Ward 5. I'm married and a father of three wonderful children. The reason why I'm running for city council is to give the citizens of Ward 5 a voice and a partner at City Hall. I am approachable and a great listener. I am accessible by cell phone, text, email, my website, or Facebook, and I'll call you back. I am accountable and I worry about tomorrow, today. I have a plan for business development by assisting businesses, business owners with the Eastside Business Association. Businesses need to have a partnership in City Hall. I also work with I will also work with private investment firms, the higher education sector, and new businesses to grow the economy in Ward Five. When you elect me, I will have Ward Ward meetings regularly. My goal is to create neighborhood associations that I can work side by side with residents and develop more participation from citizens of Ward 5 on community pride with community cleanups and grow our neighborhood crime watch. Thank you. Okay, and Dennis, you have one, one fifteen. Good evening, and thank you, uh, Mark and Ron, and uh, all the listeners that brought to Community Access and, of course, WXBR. My name is Dennis DiNapoli. I've been the Ward City Councilor for 14 years. Available, dedicated, involved. That's what I have been done. That's what I've been doing in the last 14 years. I'm always accessible. There's a lot of new businesses that have come into Ward 5 in the past 14 years. There's a lot of new streets that I have been readily repaved and repaired. Also, water mains have been replaced. In Ward 5 alone, across the city, we have re repaved 26 streets in Ward 5 alone in the past 14 years. I'm very, very proud of that. As for new businesses, there's many, many new businesses on the east side. I'll just give you a few examples. Home Depot, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and also a brand new Cumberland Farms is, will, be, will be coming very, very shortly. I've, re I've received numerous phone calls on the past budget. And I have voted against the tax increase that will be coming up in December. Thank you. Okay. First question is from Ron. Financially, the city is in solvent shape despite uh, a depression-like period of time, uh, despite uh, mortgage problems and such. Yet uh, the rainy day fund is tight. Do you feel? Uh, do you think it's important to hold a large, a good, solid bond rating, or more important to give the taxpayers relief? Dennis first. Well, first of all, we have three accounts, Ron. We have a stabilization account, we have a rainy day account, and we have a supplemental reserve account. They're all different. They all have money in it. Okay. It's very, very important for us to achieve new businesses coming into the city to hold the tax rate down. It's very, very important also to make sure our bond rating is a, is a, is a double A or a triple A rating because we have to borrow money. Right now, the city is borrowing over $260 million for past projects we have done. School roofs, school buildings, city hall renovations. There's a, there's a lot going on. Also, the retirement fund, we had to put money into that. So you have to have a good bond rating. You have to do, you have to have a balance. Okay. All the same question? Definitely. Well, you know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, my opponent, he, he was quoted in the paper saying that, worry about tomorrow, tomorrow, which we got to worry about today. Um, we have to make sure that our bond's strong. We have to make sure that we're bringing the businesses, and we got to make sure our tax rate stays the same and don't go up. Um, this time, Mr. DiNapoli voted against taxes, but the several since he's been there for the last 14 years, he voted for them. Um, so definitely, we have to make sure we stay 
on course, not raise taxes, try not to raise taxes as much as possible, and we have to make sure that our stabilization fund and all our other accounts are, are profitable and we're making money and we'll be able to get a strong bond. So you're both saying basically the same thing. Yes. Did you, any Can I have a rebuttal? Yes. Uh, Mr. Spears, if you've been around the last few years in, in Ward 5, you know how I voted. I have, mm -hmm. I have voted against tax increases many, many times, not just this time around. So please don't say that. Okay. But after reviewing his record, he definitely raised taxes. Thank you. Um, my question would be, um, city council takes a lot of time. Um, in the past, different races, people have talked about full-time city councilors, part-time city councilors. I was involved in a race last year, full-time, part-time. Um, my question is first to Ollie and then to uh, Dennis. Do you have time to be a city councilor? Are you aware of the commitment that it's going to take to be a councilor? Definitely. Thank you, Mark. Yes, I definitely have time. Um, being a city council, it's it's definitely a full-time job. So you got to make sure you can balance it between work, your family, and your the citizens of Ward 5. And I think I could definitely do that. Like I said, when people call me, I'll call them back. If they have issues, I'll make sure I give them a call, and we're going to work through it. Thank you. Dennis? Thank you, Mark. When I first ran in 1999 and got sworn in 2000, I was the city's first time, full-time, city councilor. I'm retired, I have the time, and I've been a full-time city councilor for 14 years. Okay, thank you. Ron? Mark? Oh, what's wrong with my question? <laughs> yeah, it's your, it's your turn. <laughs> How important is experience uh, compared to fresh blood? Oh, definitely. I, I'm glad you asked that question because I know November 1999, somebody was new. Somebody was a new city councilor and didn't have experience, and he learned. So uh, it doesn't matter. As long as you have the passion and the desire, you can do the job. Thank you for asking that great question. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Experience is very, very important. The city council is going to be changed this time around. There's going to be at least three new faces on the city council. We have a very, very tough budget coming up in 2014, and you definitely need people there that know how to run the, run the city and to, and to maintain the finances and to, and to deal with the budget. It's going to be a very, very difficult thing next year. We have no idea how much money is coming back from the state. Okay. Can I rebut that? Sure. Like I said, in 1999, in November, Mr. DiNapoli didn't have any experience as a city councilor. And I'm a pretty smart guy, and I'm pretty sure I can learn. Thank you. Dennis, did you want to say anything more? No, that's fine. Okay. Now, let's talk about experience, okay? Mm -hmm. Take your life experience and tell us why, without getting necessarily negative towards the other candidate, why your life experience is better suited to being a city councilor. Okay, I'm going to, uh, Dennis is the city councilor, incumbent right now. Dennis, how did your life experience uh, help you to serve the residency award that you've been elected? Well, years ago I was a, a, bu a businessman, and uh, that experience gave me a very, very broad idea what city government was. I've been involved with city government many, many years before I became a city councilor. I've been, been involved in a lot of different projects across the city, and that's what gave me the experience and the ideas and the motivation to become a city councilor. Okay, same question in a little different fashion, Ollie. Um, you have... Everybody has different experiences and different uh, life stories to bring to the table. What makes you a better choice? Definitely. Like, ever since I was 16 years old, I've always been involved in the community, um, working with the police, working with city officials, working with the Brock Housing Authority, working with citizens. So it's, al it's always been in my blood. It's always something I've done, and I believe that I could take it to the next level and become the Ward 5 city councilor. Okay. Right. To bring more business into Brockton, many candidates are perhaps you feel the same way, feel that uh, the commercial tax rate should be lowered. In doing so, in a fiscal problem such as we have now, you would have to raise property taxes again on the residents. So how do you do something like that? How do you bring business in 
uh, with a tax break, where does that money come from? I'll leave first. Yeah. Definitely. I think we, you, know, you could definitely do a TIF, um, but if we can bring businesses and not use that all the time, uh, we can work with we can work with the educational side with Massasoit because you know they just passed a law where you can community colleges can have dorm rooms um, on their property. So why can't we work with Massasoit, bring in bring in dorm rooms where we bring more students in where they're going to spend money on the east side. So I think that's a great a great way to bring a revenue for more students to come to Brockton, spend money at the you know Walgreens, the different restaurants and things like that. Um, so that's that. That would be my take: higher education, and also um, my background. I'm, I'm a recruiter, so I could call different organizations or or corporations and try to bring them into in Brockton and give let them know that it's a it's it's a great reason, uh, a good motivation to come on the east side because it's over 30 abandoned buildings since you know my. So again, my question was: How do you balance the budget? How do you bring money in to pay for the city if you're going to? Lower the tax rate commercially. Another minute, and then I'll give oh. Dennis too. All right, it's so back to me. Oh. Well, yeah. you just okay. to answer that question. So basically, what I'm saying, if we could bring with the higher education, where we don't have to do, we won't have to do a TIF. We won't have to do, we won't have to lower any rates. We could just bring in the bring in the dorms and and bring in the students. I hope um, revenue without without touching anything that way. Okay. Yes. Well, that's a great question, Mark and Ron. Uh, first of all, you have to. Uh, you have to give businesses tips because of the cash, the tax rate. The track tax rate is thirty-three dollars and change per thousand for businesses. So what we do is, when the Bernardi Group comes to Brockton and spends twenty-five million dollars, we give them a twenty-year tiff. So the tax rate is lower uh, for the first twenty years, and after that, they go to the regular tax rate. We need a city planner, which is going to be hired very, very shortly, and we've been fighting on the city council not literally fighting, to get involved, to hire a city planner. The city planner's job is to bring new businesses in, you know, just like the new Cumberland Farms. I was approached by a gentleman in, uh, in uh, Revere, Massachusetts, Bootsy Barbecue Sauce. I could happily say that he's coming to Brockton with 50 new jobs. And, and it's, it's in Ward 4. He's going to spend $5 million. And he's going to get a TIF. He's going to come in front of the city council. And that's what we need. We need manufacturing jobs. We, we need jobs that this city used to manufacture uh, shoes, leather goods, and a whole lot of other things. And we have to get back to that concept today. We need manufacturing jobs in this city. But, like, like I said, we could tiff everybody, but you, the question was how do, we, how do we lower the tax rate? I said if we could bring business in without using the tiff, that would definitely bring, it, um, bring in more revenue. Um, so that's, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Do we always have to use a TIF? No, let's not always use a TIF. Because what about all the businesses that were already here before that aren't taking advantage of the TIF that are getting shafted? So we gotta, we got to work on that. Yes. Can I rebuttal on yes. that? Okay, thank you very much. First of all, we don't shaft any businesses in the city of Brockton. We have expansions, okay? We have W.B. Mason just received a TIF. They're going to expand. The Knight Company, Ward 5. The Mattress Maker, Ward 5, expanded, new TIFs. The Evans Machinery Company, Ward 5, they expanded, we gave them a TIF. Woodwoods, expanded, Ward 5. T.E. Cochran, expanded, we gave them a TIF. That's what we want. Companies to stay in this city, the tax base will will we'll, we'll grow if we could keep businesses in this city. We lost Sorelli's Foods many, many years ago. With it, now they're out of business. It, you know, we, we didn't fight hard enough to, to keep businesses in the city. So that's what the TIF program is. It's a great program, and other cities and towns fight over the TIF program because they want to attract those businesses. We need to keep our businesses in Brockton, and we still have to grow. But we're at a 98 per, 98 percent growth rate right now. There's not much room for expansion in the city. That's why we have to maintain some of these older factories and buildings in the city of Brockton and turn them into in, into business businesses. Excuse me. Yeah, and then like, like you said, those companies are expanding. But what about the companies that aren't expanding? That the tax rate are going up. Those are people I'm talking about. I'm talking about those businesses that can't expand because the tax rate's too high. My question to follow up on Ron's question is, 
residents. There's a, there's a balance when they come before the city council for the tax classification hearing, if I'm using the correct term. Um, the chamber comes represented and they ask that the business taxes either are lowered or stay low or the TIFs are in place. Um, the only ones that come out to speak for the residents are, are residents and they're not an organized group. How do you balance the two? I guess that's my question to spin it a little differently. Dennis? Well, two years ago, the businesses came in front of the city council because the tax rate was sort of getting out of control. And I was one of the city councilors that voted against an increase that year because of the businesses. They found it, it was a hardship. So I voted against that. And also, two years ago, the state gave us permission to get a quarter of a percent on the meals tax, which I voted against because the businesses thought that it would hurt the restaurants paying an extra 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 cents a dollar on your meals tax. And I also voted against that. Okay, Molly. What was the question again? Because I don't um, know if you answered that. How to balance really the residential and business tax rate? So basically, Myself, so when I'm elected as city councilor, I want to be the voice for the residents. I want to make sure that I'm sticking up for them because right now, it's nobody sticking up for them. We're raising taxes, we're using all types of different funds to, to, to give raises, and we're not looking out for the citizens of Brockton. Because every everybody I talk to when I walk in, they say, hey, our tax going up, I can't afford it, I'm on a fixed income. So I want to be that the champion, I want to be the ambassador to make sure that I'm looking out for them. Okay, one more question on, on this subject, and then we'll change to another topic. Some towns around the Brockton area offer seniors an opportunity to do some work for the community and have a, a, not a lot of money. I think it's something like $500. Is that something either of you would support or oppose? Ollie? Definitely, I definitely support that. I look at you know look at look at all the numbers and see if we could do that. See how much if how much it will affect the, the the bottom line. But it's definitely something I, I would look into and I support. Dennis, uh, Mr. Spears, you don't have to look into it because that right now that is a bill that's a not a bill, but it's a, a resolve that's in the ordinance committee brought forward by uh, Councilor at Large Robert Sullivan. And uh, what it will do is if you volunteer in, in cities, in certain departments, uh, you will receive a, a, a break off your taxes. So that is already being looked at, and we have to make sure it's, it's prepared right so we can implement it. And I think it's a great program for seniors, yes. Thank you. All right. Short of reducing crime, which I don't know anybody can do necessarily to any great extent, what would you do as an image program to improve the image of Brockton to people that don't live here, to bring people here, to make them feel like this is an area that they may want to move to? How do you promote that? Ollie first. Def I think the w definitely way to promote it is uni unity through community with um, neighborhood associations, what I'll talk about later on. Um, definitely dealing with the, the neighborhood associations and dealing with the crime watch to make sure that we're all working together to, to make sure that Brockton is, is in, a, in a positive light. Um, I definitely, it definitely takes every citizen, it definitely takes every person to work together with the police, with city government, um, to make sure that we stay the city of champions, to make sure that people want to come to Brockton. Because I, I love Brockton, I've been here all my life, and I want to stay, and my children want to stay. Same question, Dennis? What we have to do is we have to implement more crime watches across the city to, 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 uh, to let the neighbors know and to let the, uh, the, the residents uh, feel comfortable in the city, what's going on. with this. The police need extra eyes, extra ears, and people have to get involved. Uh, since, uh, since I've been the city council, we have implemented a lot of crime watches in Ward 5. A lot of signs have gone up. And to, to implement a crime watch, you have to have so many meetings within, within a one-year period. And uh, that way there, you, you will be able to get sign, uh, signs put up in your neighborhood, your street, that say neighborhood crime watch. And uh, you have to implement. We have to, we have to sell the city. And how you sell the city is through, through the media, through social uh, networks, and also through your neighbors 
and just through communications amongst each other because we're a diversified city. Not everybody watches cable. Not everybody listens to the local radio station. So how do you get all that information out? It's very, very difficult when you have have a, a, a great number of people that we're, a, you know, a, a minority city with uh, five or six different languages to, to, to come across. It's very, very difficult. How would you communicate effectively as the city councilor in Ward 5 with and to your constituents? Dennis. Well, great question, and that was implemented in 2006 when I became the council president. Um, as Ron knows, I was uh, very, very uh, successful uh, with the WXBR. I, we, I, had, I had my own radio program, and every Monday and every Tuesday, I would call uh, the, the news program and also Ron Van Dam uh, show and let the people know what went on at the meeting before and inform them what was going to go on at the meeting. So uh, I've already done that. And the same with cable. Uh, I used to, uh, uh, I never did a cable show. That's one thing I, Mark asked me many, many years ago, but it was very, very difficult to put the, uh, the, the whole package together to do a cable show. But uh, maybe, maybe we can work on, on doing that again. Okay. When, when you retire, you go, you can do TV. Um, my thing is, it's a couple of different things. TV, radio with these gentlemen right here, um, social media. Um, but what I want to do, I want to have precinct captains where we'll bring, like I so said, break up the woods with the neighborhood associations. We'll have precinct captains. So when the, when the information comes up the top, it gets to me. When the information goes down from the top, it gets to them. So I think you, unity and community is huge. You definitely, um, grassroots is where it's at, knocking on doors answering phone calls and talking to people. So new ways of doing it. Do you think the old ways of doing it, like uh, meeting with the constituents, is is current or passe? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, you have to do both, Mark. You know, ward meetings are very, very important, okay? Sometimes when you have a ward meeting, you get five or six people to attend. When there are major, major issues, like we had the, 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 the meeting at the Unknown School, there were 300 people there, okay? And how do you get that information out? I mean, you have to get it out through the media, through cable, through radio, and through, you know, through television. And also, you know, through Facebook and, and Twitter and, and, and everything you can. You know, the other way... You, you can do it is uh, knock on doors and do, go door to door like I had. I had, a, I had a major issue on Portland Street, okay, and I had a major issue on Con Road. My wife and I walked that whole street to inform people that was, there was a meeting coming up and, and, and letting them know exactly uh, the time and place to get involved in that. Definitely. Um, I definitely want to say that's old. We have to build on that with the TV, with the radio, and build on with social media. Um, and speaking of ward meetings, we have a ward meeting on the, the 16th, and Mr. Dinopoli doesn't want to come and meet his, um, his citizens. We reached out a couple of times, um, and I think ward meetings are very important. I think, you know, you get a lot of information done, you can brainstorm, and you can talk about issues and you know, bring it to the citizens, and that's more grassroots than anything. Dennis, did you want to Can I respond to the yes. ward meeting? Mm -hmm. Mr. Spears. I have had ward, ward meetings for the past 14 years. First of all, how come I've never seen you at one of my ward meetings? Well, I wasn't going February, but something came up. But you know, what I said, I emailed you because you have so many ward meetings. I emailed you and I asked you, you hey, never can I have emailed your records? Me. You I never, have, you I never, said, can, can you I have never, your records for the ward meetings? And you, know, you never got back to me. I don't keep records of ward meetings. First of all, you do not have a ward meeting during a campaign. That's an ethics thing. I don't know if you know that or not. I never have had a ward meeting during a campaign. What is the ethics? I, never, I, I, looked, I looked online and didn't see anything because wrong with it. Because you can't use it for a political... It's, it's nothing political. Well, if, if citizens have problems, they want to talk. I and haven't, and, and, and I I haven't received head. any calls, Mr. Spears, on a ward meeting. I and all of a sudden, you out of oh, the blue. Oh, what, what, okay, you, sorry, you know, sorry, out of the sorry, blue, you, you go to the school department, you, 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 uh, you ask the school department that you want to have a ward meeting. I would carry but You know, so, and, and okay. you never invite... You booked the hall before you invited me. Okay, okay, but, all right, so here's the situation, Mr. Mm -hmm. Dinopoli. Yeah. They had a ward meeting in Ward 4, and then so a couple of people say, hey, why don't we have a ward meeting? 
So myself, I, I stayed away from it because I'm running for office. But a couple of people from Ward 5 said... Hey. That's right. I'm running for office. Right. I stay away from it. So you, you, just, people, you just answered your question, sir. Mr. Denopoli, aren't you the counselor? Aren't I am you, the counselor. The counselor? Yes, I am. So some I do not citizens. have ward meetings during so, campaign seasons. Can, can I finish? What don't you understand? Can, can I finish or no? Can I finish? Finish and then we'll okay. move on. All right. So, thank, thank I you I stay for away. That's what you said. So... I'm running for office, so I don't want it political. But I know. So, th okay, just end it. Please end it. I mean, this is but, ridiculous. But he's he's let, running for Brock, office. He doesn't want to. Wanna... Brock, can I talk to you? Because obviously you won't let me talk. You know, obviously enough, enough was talk. enough on take, the question. Take, please. Take, take, no, I, he finished. Why can't I finish? You just answered the finish. question, Ollie. He finished. I didn't get to finish. I didn't get to finish. Ten seconds. So, Ten Citizens seconds. Award 5 wanted to award me, and they tried to reach out to you several times. And you didn't respond. That was your brother and yourself. Okay. Those are the citizens, all right? Enough is enough with I the ward meeting. My brother, that you don't, my brother Orlando. That you, that, my brother Orlando. Go ahead. And my brother Orlando doesn't live in Brockton. You just said it all. You don't have ward meetings when you're running for political Who's office. Who's my brother? Why would I? Who's my brother? My brother doesn't okay. live in Brockton. Your stepbrother. Definitely. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Ron, for having me here. So on November 5th, I'm asking you for, for your vote to elect Ollie J. Spears. What sets me apart from Mr. Denali is several things. I am a problem solver. I believe with regular ward meetings, we can talk and brainstorm to move, to move Ward 5 forward. I have a track record dating back to 1991 working in our community. My involvement was and still is to help the community as a whole. I work with many different agencies and citizens for positive results in Brockton. My efforts and my group, our pods are possibly won the 1,000 Point of Light Award at the White House with Bill Clinton, President Clinton, I'm sorry. I will work hard and help every citizen in Ward 5 with their issues. I will not pick and choose who I help. I will talk and shake hands with every neighbor and citizen in Ward 5. Mr. DiNapoli doesn't. Mr. DiNapoli believes he, he's above the law and doesn't have to answer to anybody by going to private property and stealing the citizens' belongings. A couple weeks ago, Mr. Denapoli was quoted by the Brockton Enterprise stating, and I quote, we can worry about tomorrow, tomorrow, and I quote. Is this the type of leadership that Ward 5 deserves? In order to move Ward 5 forward, together we need to learn from our past, work hard today, and plan for tomorrow. In my opening statement, I talked about neighborhood associations, businesses, biz, um, east side business associations, and growing the economy. We need a leader to put all these pieces together while working with one another to advance our ward for a better Brockton. In the past 14 years, Mr. DiNapoli hasn't had a plan for Ward 5, and worry about tomorrow, tomorrow attitude isn't a plan for Ward 5. So on November 5th, please vote for new leadership Vote for Ollie J. Spears. Thank you, Brockton, for being my foundation, and I love you, Brockton. Dennis, 205. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Thank you, Ron. And thank you, uh, Brockton Community Access and WXPR. I've been the ward councilor for 14 years. I'm very, very proud of my record. For the past 14 years, I've addressed many, many issues before my constituents. Together, we work to improve public safety and other community issues. As your Ward 5 Counselor, I will continue to hold regular ward meetings and crime watch meetings. These, these, these provide the opportunity to keep aware and informed about issues that are impacting our great city. My opponent is trying to hoax me into a ward meeting. I do not have ward meetings during the political season, and he also said that he wasn't getting involved in a political uh, ward meeting. So on November the 5th, I would like your vote to continue working in Ward 5. We've achieved a lot of good things in Ward 5. 26 streets have been repaved. A lot of new businesses have been brought forward in, the, in, the, in, in Ward 5. Cumberland Farms, Home Depot, JLS, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, Eastern Bank, just to name a few of them plus many, many eateries that are in Ward 5. 
So on November the 5th, I would like your vote, your support, to continue working for the better of Brockton. Thank you very much. And thank you both gentlemen for being here. It's important to discuss the issues, but more importantly, it's important to vote on November 5th. We want to make our turnout even better than it was in the preliminary election. Go out there, voice your choice, make your voice heard. Uh, continue to watch uh, the forums we have on Brockton Community Access and WXPI Radio.